a new approach to an old profession. Today, I'm sitting down with Cindy Morin, founder and owner of Resolve Legal Group. She'll be discussing how her approach to family law has been changing the dynamics for a lot of families that are going through a tough time on this episode of Barter and Business. Let's get into it. Welcome to Barter and Business, where we delve into bartering through interviews and personal stories. From my trading business to barter pay, the trading journey started with my dad's business. Now, as a barter pay franchise owner, I juggle family life and coaching. Tune in for industry secrets and inspiring conversations. Welcome back to another episode of Barter and Business. Today I'm with Cindy Morin from Resolve Legal Group. Welcome, Cindy. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. So I would love to hear kind of what inspired you to become a lawyer ultimately. Um, tell me about yourself, kind of some background and all of that. Sure. So my uh, early, st- well, I'll, I mean, I don't know how much background you want. <laughs> so let me, let me start from the beginning. Um, so in a life before I was a lawyer, I was a stay-at-home mom. I was also a high school dropout because I dropped out of high school to uh, become a rock star, but had no success at that. Um, but I was a stay-at-home mom, and my husband had his own business, and um, you know I took care of the kids in the house, but I also helped him out a little bit with the business. And that was my first real taste at running a business. Um, My husband was tragically killed in a car accident when I was pregnant with our youngest, and my other two were toddlers. They're very close in age. So um, my life drastically changed overnight. I had to make a choice whether I wanted to raise my kids in poverty or do something different. But the day that he died, all of our income was cut off as well because he was an entrepreneur there was no company benefits or anything like that so it was a very shocking time um i gave birth to my youngest and um, shortly thereafter went to mount royal university which was mount royal college and uh, did some upgrading and took some university transfer courses went to um, U of C, I transferred over there because at the time, I'm gonna date myself here, but at the time Mount Royal was still a college, so I had to transfer to the University of Calgary. And I did my undergraduate degree in psychology. So the master plan was to become a forensic psychologist. Um, And of course I was working all throughout school as well. Um, doing various social work positions. Um, I worked at the Young Offender Centre for a while. Um, I was doing social work stuff in the community. I was doing mediations. I was doing uh, counselling for families, that sort of thing. Um, And then when it came time to apply for grad studies, um, I didn't get in, which I was shocked because I had perfect GPA. Um, However, I wanted to study forensic psychology and I learned from the department that that's why my application was rejected because typically those students go to uh, Simon Fraser or Waterloo. Um, I couldn't leave Calgary because one of my children had special needs so I could only go to school at the University of Calgary. And I started to get desperate and panicky because um, all of a sudden my, my first degree was done and now I had to pay back student loans and I'm like, ah, how can I pay back these massive student loans on an undergraduate degree? Um, so I just started applying to a whole bunch of programs, hoping that I could get into something just to stop my student loan repayments and um, ended up getting into law school, which I actually thought that the law school was pretty desperate because I, I couldn't believe that I had got in. Um, didn't think that was ever going to happen. So my plan was originally to go to law school for a year and then reapply to grad school. But when I went to my first year of law school, um, it was just a better fit. So U of C is very practical and uh, they have a program called Student Legal Assistance, which um, students are supervised by by senior counsel and they get hands-on experience in court right away so my first month in law school i was already representing people in criminal court and provincial court that's mind-blowing it was mind-blowing and i remember thinking i've only been doing this for a month what do i know (laughs) and uh judge fradsham who um was our our criminal judge that we saw often in court uh, said to me well uh, you're one month ahead of the self-rep. 
and you know how the process works, so you help to guide things along. And so it's a good thing. So he convinced me that what I was doing was useful, even though I felt like I didn't have enough experience. Um, and I did, I was very successful in court. I, I was helping clients and, and felt like I was making a difference and thought, yeah, this is a better fit for me. So from then on, I, I stuck with the practice of law and uh, I, I won't get into the long story of how I ended up in family law from criminal, but uh, um, family law just seemed to be a natural fit and I could incorporate some of the things I had learned when I was studying psychology uh, and counseling to apply to my practice. So it was just very rewarding to uh, to be a family lawyer as opposed to what I was doing before. So it, my career found me is the, is the short version of this story. No kidding, oh, my mind is blown. <laughs> Since I met you, I have been amazed by you. You are an incredible woman. The, the boxes of projects you have in your home <laughs> is very inspiring as an entrepreneur, but I didn't know half of that. That is, I have so much more respect for you. I had a lot to begin with. That is incredible. And even just the fact of raising three kids, one with special needs, and going to law school of all things, like that is mind blowing. Yep, I look back and uh, I don't know where I had the energy. I think I was just running on adrenaline and, and yeah. panic, um, but it just, it worked out. Wow, that is incredible. Yeah, and then when I went to open my own practice, um, what, I, I worked at a very uh, prestigious family law firm uh, when I first started practicing. And um, then I decided that I wanted to do something a little bit different in my practice. And back when I had lost my husband, um, my best friend was going through a divorce. And I was dealing with my own grief, so I, I wasn't really there for her. But what I found was when you're a widow, you know, the neighbors come together and they bring you casseroles and they babysit your kids so you can make necessary phone calls. You just get wrapped around with support. But my girlfriend, who was also grieving the loss of her marriage, um, nobody was there for her because it was just a divorce, right? Um, and, and like I said, and I couldn't even be there for her, but I felt really bad for her because I thought, you know, here I'm getting all of this support, but I didn't have to, you know, wonder what happened in my marriage, um, you know, why did things not work out? This was circumstance. You know, I, I knew my husband loved me. There was no um, worry about that. So it was a different kind of grieving. It was grieving my husband, you know, saying goodbye to him and trying to plan a life without him, what that might look like. Whereas my girlfriend, um, you know, in addition to having to plan her life, she was, you know, dealing with all of these emotional issues like why did our marriage break down or, or why did the infidelity happen? And and so her grief, it, it seemed to be more painful because she didn't have those supports and because she had all these extraneous things that she was dealing with emotionally. Um, and so, you know, fast forward years later when I opened my practice, I always thought back about that time with her and thought back about the time with me and how much support that I had received. And I said, you know, I'm going to open a law firm and I'm going to offer wraparound supports so that my family law clients or even those who have experienced death, because we do estate work as well, um, so that they all have that support. Because not everybody even has a good network of friends or family to support them. So we developed a role at the firm called a client support coordinator. Um, there's no charge to our clients to use their services. And one role of their position is to find supports for our clients, um, whether that be financial assistance, counseling, even just helping them find a new school for their children if they're moving out of the area, whatever they need from a non-legal basis to, to move them through the process, um, they're there at no charge for my clients. That is incredible, man. Like You talked a little bit about a few of those things that you do differently at your law firm, and everyone has such a negative connotation about lawyers yeah. and obviously divorces, and it's just kind of a, a tough topic, but I love the way you're doing it, and that is so beautiful and holistic and obviously comes from such a 
natural place of seeing your friend go through that. And it's so true. Yeah. And I never thought of that before. Yeah. I always say, you know, you never want to lose somebody you love by death, but it's easier than divorce, sadly, you know. Um, there's so much high emotion involved. I mean, there is in either scenario, but it's different. There's a lot of anger, negative emotion with divorce, whereas, you know, you've got fond memories mm -hmm. of your loved one that's passed yeah. on. So it's, it's a different kind of grieving. Yeah. But yeah, the client support coordinator role was one of the smartest things I've ever done for the firm and for my clients. We also know that, you know, uh, families that experience domestic abuse, we know when somebody has to retell their story over and over, it can be re-traumatizing. So another reason why we set up that position was um, so that the client, if, if they wanted, could sign their consent for the client support coordinator to reach out to different agencies and tell their story for them so that they don't have to. So yeah. Wow. And our motto is that we're solution focused and client centered and it's not lip service. We regularly check in with the clients um, and, and say, hey, what can we do to make things better? And we implement whatever we can in order to make that process easier for our clients. That I'm, I'm mind blown, honestly, like I, you are very unique. That's what I love about you and what you do. That is amazing. Yeah. Wow. And I know lawyers get a bad rap. Yeah. Um, like any profession, you've, you've got good ones and bad ones. Um, but if any of your uh, watchers want to know how to interview a lawyer, um, we give out free resources on how to search for a lawyer, the right questions to ask, because it is buyer beware. You don't know who you're hiring. Even if your best friend you know, referred their lawyer, that lawyer may have been a good fit for them, but not necessarily for you. So it's important to try to interview lawyers and, and uh, see who's going to best fit your family because it's it's not a small decision on who you're choosing to represent you. Um, in addition to the law, you want to make sure that, that they have the right mindset approaching your family. And um, I feel the best family lawyers out there are the ones who try to restructure a family in the healthiest way possible and recognize that even though this family is separating, there's still a family. And, and to look at the whole thing uh, with a bigger picture in mind um, when you're coming to reach resolutions that's going to work for them. That's incredible. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here, Cindy. It is a pleasure and an honor to hear more of your story. And if people want to get in touch with you, what's the best way to do that? Well, first of all, thank you for having me. It's been my pleasure. And if anybody wants to get a hold of Resolve Legal Group, they can phone 403-229-2365, or they can check out our website, which is www.resolvelegalgroup.com. Thanks for tuning into this episode of Barter and Business. Next week, we'll be sitting down with Cindy again to discuss more about her business and bartering. See you then. Thanks for tuning in to Barter and Business. I hope my journey and tips inspire your own trading adventures. Stay passionate and keep swapping. See you next time.